Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to EB Expo, of course, for the World of Tanks Australian National Series. We've got the second half of our semi-final matches to come very, very shortly, and I guarantee you guys there will be no uh, there will be no shortage of excitement. That's for sure. All four of the teams that have been competing over this weekend have fought through a grueling stage of qualifiers to get here. And remember, guys, the win here not only will get them their ticket to China for the World Cyber Games in 2013, but it'll also get them a ticket straight into Season 2 of the Tanks Asia Masters Series. And that is also a big deal for them as well. So we're going to introduce the teams to you very, very shortly. We already saw Mind Freak and Avant Guard go head-to-head -head earlier on today. And, of course, Avant Guard far too strong there with the 3-0 over Mind Freak. Very, very well-played games. But now it is time to get on to our second match of the day. So we're going to see CQ Cubs go up against the Cherry Pickers. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the stage and welcome the CQ Cubs up onto the stage as well. Thank you very much, guys. We're going to hang out on the stage here with Bridge Burner. He is the captain of the CQ Cubs. We'll come across a little bit more here for them again. Now, you guys, um, uh, like CQ Cubs, is a bit of a mashup team of uh, definitely a lot of players from uh, from all different, uh, you know, from all different sort of areas, I guess, and, and teams as well. You know each other fairly well, but tell me, what's your preparation been like for this event? Because obviously, you know, a couple of months ago, you guys were sort of doing your own thing. I've got a lot of you guys are from PvP as well. The, uh, the winners of the season one of Tanks Age of Masters. So tell me, what's your preparation been like in the lead up to this tournament? It's pretty much uh, easy going, you know, we're a relaxed team. All of the guys here chill with each other in team speak. It's uh, not much serious preparation, just YOLO, you know. <laughs> a bit, I, I like that, a bit of YOLO, that's good to hear. So, um, you know, you guys have had a chance to scope out the competition a little bit now, and uh, you guys are obviously getting yourself ready to, uh, to try and, you know, show everyone what you guys have got. Tell me. You know, you've got a star-studded lineup. That, let, let's be honest. You guys have got some fantastic players. But what is the one thing that characterizes you guys? You said kind of YOLO, but is that is that your style? or? That's our style, you know. Whatever goes at the day, the battle caller calls it, we do it. And who is the battle caller for you guys? We've got two battle callers, actually. Comics and Batman. So, the guy with the mask, the guy next to him. Well, I don't think we can miss Batman. Thank you very much for the chat. Go sit down with your boys and get ready to roll this one out. That was, uh, of course, Preach Burner from the Sea Cucumbers. And their opponents are going to be the Cherry Pickers! Thank you guys, we're going to take some time here with Chapo on the main stage, obviously the captain for the Cherry Pickers. I think uh, the question on everyone's lips is, where'd you guys get the name from? Uh, we like to steal kills, so that's what we do. So, yeah, just cherry pick the last kill, that's what we do. Is there anyone on your team that is like more of a cherry picker than most? I'm sure my team would actually say it'd be me. So, yeah, that'd be it. It'd be me. Fair enough. Now... You know, you guys, are, again, another team that's sort of been a little bit mashed together sort of recently. You guys have come together for this tournament. Obviously, a couple of you guys are from MP as well. Uh, and uh, maybe Panzer. No, sorry, DPS, should I say. Good save, Mitch. Um, so you guys, uh, you know, and a few Panzer actually in there as well. Um, you know, uh, what, what, do you think, what do you think gives you guys the upper hand here? What do you think you guys are really counting on to bring you through? Nothing in terms of strat uh, strategy, of course. But uh, what do you think you've got on your side that the other teams don't? Uh, we've played together a long time now, so uh, most of the guys know, and we platoon a lot together. So, yeah, we're I don't know, we're pretty comfortable with that. So, yeah, we're good. Well, let's hope that the, uh, the the chemistry you guys have really comes into its own. Thank you for joining me on the stage, Chapo. Thank you very much. Of course, the teams are set now, but uh, we'll pass to Greg and let's put these guys under the microscope a little bit more. Well, the sea cucumbers. As you said, they're a bit of a conglomerate of a team. They're not a, uh, a straightforward team. They're not a bunch of guys that have played together for a long time. They all know each other and have played together for a long time on the same servers, on the Southeast Asia server, as it were, now the Asia server. But their pedigree is impeccable. 
The guys from PvP, they are some serious players with a serious reputation. That's right, and you really can't, uh, you know, we're looking at the, the big three here of, um, you know, Anato, Batman, and of course Comics, all of those guys, uh, you know, are going to be uh, really out to do some damage here, and, um, and it's fair enough, like, they, they do, they've been around, okay, they're obviously in That's PvP, right. super friends with the winners of Season 1 of the Tanks Asia Masters, so uh, these guys definitely know what they're doing, and they're, they're definitely going to be here to, uh, to create a splash, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly right. In terms of uh, the lineup from your side of things over there on the Cherry Pickers, as you said, there's a lot of experienced players there as well, though, aren't there? That's right. You know, uh, we're seeing, you know, guys like Chapo, uh, of course, and we've got a couple of armed guys in there as well, Trozos and Hermitech, so they're sort of uh, coming into that team as well. Um, but, all, you know, all these guys, uh, they've been around. They know, they know exactly what they're doing, and uh, I think that uh, we're going to see definitely some fantastic games from all of these guys. I don't really, uh, I don't know, I don't think that... I can't really, I can't really give an upper hand to either of these teams right now as well. Uh, I haven't seen a great deal of them uh, sort of go go head to head yet. I really, I really feel like this will be this will be very much a telling game and a different one. We need to really judge on its merits, I guess, and, and the same with these players. Well. Yeah, it's really hard to uh, to try and put a a pick on this one. They're both teams that bring a lot to the table, and as you say, it really could go either way. But as we've seen in the earlier games today, this is World of Tanks, a game where just the most decisive, simple move can really turn things. That's right. So uh, we'll get the guys uh, invited on here into the training room and uh, hopefully go try and uh, go right ahead with the, with the game. So you know, we'll get them in here in a sec. But let's talk a little bit about now the first map. The first map is, of course, going to be the map of Steps. Steps, which we've seen earlier today, a, a map that has a lot of undulating terrain. Uh, there's not any structures to be seen except a very small, maybe a building and a, a train track in the northwestern corner of the map. But in terms of how you play the map, not a lot of guys try and run straight up the center. It's a bit of a killing field, a bit of a killing zone. Instead, we have a, a rocky area out on the left of the map and a, a big, long gully that sort of spans from the center of the map at the top down to the bottom corner on the right. How that will play out, you can see, tend to see teams do what we call play the clock, where you'll see one team go up the left-hand side, the other team come down the right-hand side, and there the twain shall meet. But eventually there's a scout somewhere, lets people know what's going on and uh, soon people change their route and head straight for the other team. As for whether that will happen here, we don't really know. It's, with two teams of the kind of calibre we're seeing here, you know, it's very hard to predict what sort of play we'll see. All we can really guarantee is whatever tactics they play, they'll play them well. Exactly right. So obviously, uh, looking at looking at where everyone's going to be spawning at the moment, we're going to see a northern spawn uh, on the on the map of steps coming out for the cherry pickers here. Uh, so that's you know that'll be interesting to see uh, you know how they, they work. The one we saw already, uh, you know, between Mind Freak, uh, you know, earlier on uh, against Avant Garde as well. Like they really made it quite obvious where they were headed. Um, so uh, you know, will these guys go for a little bit more of a veiled strat? Will they try and hide their sort of first moves? I don't know. It, it's it's. It's going to be hard to say, but what I do really think is that you know these teams are going to have to have learnt from what we saw earlier on between yeah. Mind Freak and Avant, and definitely. They definitely try and come up with something a little bit different. You know, like definitely, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, like the Southern Spawn doesn't really want to go uh, to the right hand side into that uh, valley at all, does he? Really, um, it's not not a safe idea for them. Uh, no, no, exactly right, because it basically you enter straight away a big long killing zone where the other team can have a nice long line of fire at you. But uh, also up on the top right, you've got a whole area there that if you run from the top spawn, you can't enter it. There's a couple of dead ends there out on the left side of the map that for the, uh, the uneducated pub player can be quite a waste of a minute of your time. But these guys, all being the experienced veterans that they are, aren't going to fall for that trap. Yeah, I think and, you know, the tank picks are going to be crucial here as well. I, I don't know. Will we see something different uh, to what we saw last time uh, you know, in terms of what kind of tanks they want to take on this map? You know, we're, we're going to see T-69s. Um, you know, are we going to see, mm. uh, you know, you could take anything on this on this kind of thing as well, on yeah. this kind of map, should I say. But it, it'll, it'll dictate your strat. It'll definitely, uh, you know, force you into a certain uh, style of play. So I, I, would, I would question the use of a lot of heavy tanks on this map. I definitely think that you want to try and uh, maybe stay, uh, you know, go about your business a little in a little bit more of a safer manner. Yeah. Um, and and but, but, but by the same token, get plenty of vision over the map. And, uh, you know, and obviously make sure that you can keep all your bases covered. Yeah, well, as you've said in some of the earlier maps earlier today, that this is a map that really rewards agility. It's not a map that uh, 
unless you're going to meet it down in the left corner, you can't guarantee that you're going to have the possibility to play peekaboo tanks on this one. And so if you set yourself up for that, you get caught out in the wide open, uh, yeah, it's all going to go very bad for you. So it's a map that, you know, I don't really expect to see any crazy picks. We're going to see agile tanks. Perhaps, you know, maybe each team will bring one brawler, maybe two, just in case things don't go their way. But generally, we should see a lot of agile, fast tanks with, uh, you know, the ability to get in close quickly when required and dish out some damage fast. And, well, you and I both know what sort of tanks we're talking about when I say that. Exactly. We're talking about, uh, you know, some, some serious autoloader action going on. That's the way uh, it is. And there, there's, there's a lot of tanks like that you can take into a game like yeah. this, of course. Just starting to see the, uh, the picks come through from the teams. And, yeah, it's as we said, we're not really seeing anything too surprising. Uh, a lot of French autoloader action, as, of course, everyone knows who is experienced in the game. The AMX 5100. The, uh, it's, it's the ubiquitous tournament tank, isn't it? It's sort of, it's everywhere every time you see a tournament. You're going to see 5100s. Big French tank, heavy, runs as a bit of a medium in terms of its play style, but has an absolutely savage ability to dish out six shots of damage in 18 seconds or less. Minorly less, but... 1,800 points worth of damage potential in a very short time. But of That's course, right. what happens after that? Well, I mean, w when you've you know, exhausted all your shots, and then if you yeah. sort of go run off, you've got to, you know, you've got to reload and you've got to try yeah. and get some space there. So, uh, you know, like you've got, to, you've got to be very, very careful about the way you play. You can't just run in and then sort of get shot exactly. while you're trying to unload it because no. then you're going to struggle a bit. Yeah, you, you really want to be able to get your shots off, perhaps in conjunction with either a wolf pack of tanks or maybe under the... Uh, the protection of another big brawler like an IS-3 or maybe even, say, a, uh, a 110, the, uh, the big Chinese tank. Well, that's right. And let's have a look at these picks here because the picks were actually pre-arranged like, before the game started. So we don't have to go through it right now. Yeah. So what you see uh, here is what you get. So a little bit hard to see for you guys, of course, but you know we can look at it on the, on the side. Uh, the northern spawn is going to be uh, you know, the cherry pickers here. So we see Chapo. He's in the Pershing. We've seen that once before already. Hasn't been very popular before this. Uh, before this tournament, actually. It's sort of starting to build up uh, in popularity, of course. The M26 Pershing, that's the tier 8 medium mm. American, uh, yeah, American tank. Yeah. Got that lovely little sight range on yeah. it. Like, As really, we saw really good spotting enemies. Used yeah. well. You know, so, and, of course, we're going to see 30, 92, 50, 100s. No, no surprises there, let's no. be honest. Full yeah. mobility comp here. These that's guys it. want to be able to adapt uh, to the opponent's positioning and movements yeah. a lot. And two Pershings, can I just say, are yeah. coming out for cherry pickers here. Yeah. But, of course, on the other side of the fence... Uh, no, actually, that's, that was the, uh, the other team. You've noticed there, the Sea Cucumbers are running with the two Pershings. In fact, the, uh, the Cherry Pickers, they're going completely, not completely different, but they're running T32. No, that's, uh, no, that's definitely the Sea Cucumbers. Oh, they're set. No, sorry, yeah. That is the Sea Cucumbers. They're running the, uh, the two AMX-1390s. question my knowledge. I know. Wow. The screen flipped around <laughs> on me there. They're running the two AMX-1390s, the nice little fast auto loaders, a pair of T69s. They're the American shall we say, brother of the, uh, the French auto loaders, yep. running the same sort of system. And then the T39, the big heavy, beautiful yeah. heavy hull. Uh, T32. T32, yeah. T32. T39. I should put my glasses. I have got them on. A T32. So, yeah, it's, a, it's slightly different. They're, they're going fast. They're going medium. They're not running with the big heavy system yep. that they're being uh, attacked with by the enemy. So the real difference here, obviously, well, it's two things. Firstly, um, you know, PvP's taking that T32 instead of uh, a Pershing. So it's similar, similar tanks, um, especially by looking. But of course, mm. T32 is far, far, far more better well armored on that target. Yeah. Can, can definitely poke his head over and not worry too much. Uh, you know, he's a, he, the fire rate is, you know, is, is meh for a T32. It's about yeah. 10 seconds, so yeah. it's, it's okay, it's not amazing. And whereas the Pershing, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a faster, uh, you know, it's a faster tank. So obviously, yeah. it's not going to be able to, uh, you know, stand up to as much punishment as a T32 yeah. uh, is. However, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be used in a different manner. No T69s at all being picked up here for the Cherry Pickers, which I find yeah. interesting. Well, it's, it's just a tactical thing. We don't know what... They've got an idea there. They've got an, an idea they're going to try and bring to bear on the match, and it obviously doesn't count those tanks in it. But, yeah, they've, they've gone small. Small. That's right. So we'll have to see that. There are a, a few big differences on both teams. We're going to jump straight into the game now. Both teams are ready. G -G or GLHFs have rolled out. And we're probably going to waste no time in getting on in there. So the map is steps, guys. We've seen it once today already. It's very much an open map. Um, very much sort of hard to just hide behind, um, to try to hide behind. Like, you don't have any big rocks or outcrops anyway uh, to really be able to do it. So, yeah. 
Well, let's see what they've got for us here. That's that, that's the real thing we want to we want to see how these teams use the differences in their compositions to gain the upper hand. Yeah. Well, I uh, I have a uh, on my side of the fence here. We're watching the the cherry pickers. So we can see uh, the lay the layout of the tanks at the spawn, and it's going to be interesting to see where they first choose to go. That's right. Well, I mean, looking at the map It's only now, really the two routes, isn't there? Yeah, that's exactly right. So looking over at the moment, you can see that uh, by and large, sea cucumbers there are just, uh, just sort of spreading out a little bit. We're seeing Batman comics. You know, Batman and comics always going to be holding hands in those 1390s as well. Uh, very aggressive, by the way. Very aggressive. Uh, if you stay still, um, they will jump on top of you uh, and they will, they will really uh, dig you out of your hidey hole. So we're going to see Anatole sort of bring up the rear a little bit slower, but both comics and Batman heading wide with those 39s. We already have contact though. McMole running in one of the uh, small French AMXs. He's already made contact down on the right side of the map as he went in and out of the gully. And we're already seeing shots traded as he tries to dispose of one of the T1s. In fact, that's Bridge Burner. Well, crucially, Bridge Burner actually lit up Chapo there as he came across. And Chapo took a hit. So Bridge Burner will go down. But in the meantime, Nugster hits the deck. Care of Batman. So Batman and Comics both pushing up. Look at this aggression from these guys in those 2.30.90s. They're the auto loaders. Boom. Ooh. Both T1s are down straight away. And yeah. interestingly enough, like they were, they were clustered close together by uh, the tree pickers. So that means that you know, the guys in the CQ covers know that it's a fairly sort of uh, eastern biased positioning or it was to start with anyway yeah. because uh, they left their two tier ones through the spotting area. So Batman Comics are going to pull back. Batman's going to stay up there as well and try and get some spotting done. Well the cherry pickers though they're, they're really pushing hard here out in the west now. They're committing a lot of forces. We've got Hermit Tech. He's running in the uh, AMX 5100 and then uh, we have Top Shelf there pushing up fast in the uh, it's one of the Pershings? Yeah, it is. Yep. He, he's really going to get up close and uh, see what he can do with Batman. But Batman's just retreated and vanished from the radar. That's so exactly right. It yeah. was a really good probing as a scout from him there. He, he's ascertained the position of their forces. That's all his job is. He's got out and now he can uh, direct his troops, as it were. Look, at the end of the day one, uh, the fact is there was an engagement. Both teams pulled out. But, you know, CQ Cumbers, they're up on T1. They took down that enemy, yeah. uh, that enemy T1, uh, both of them, should I say. Uh, both up on that side. They only lost that bridge banner. Bridge banner quite zealous pushing forward there, but managed to see, as you can see, Chapo has taken a bit of damage on your screen right there. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's taken that hit. You know, it, it's not a great deal, but it does, you know, every little bit counts. So far, so good for the sea cucumbers. Yeah, definitely. They're uh, having, even though they're down those tanks, they're, they're not completely disappointed. They're only down a single tank, and the uh, opposition being down two, it's a simple game of numbers there. The next encounter, though, is probably going to start to uh, tell us what's really going on with the match. It will start to direct the, where the tide is going to go, as it were. As we see Top Shelf and Chapo starting to push a little further, they're going to run into a scout here. Or not. No, there's still no one there. So that leads us to wonder just what has happened to the forces of the Sea Cucumbers. Where well, are they, Mitch? Well, here's the thing. They, they've now gone the other side. So looking over to my screen now, I've got Batman in my sights. He's sitting here in the AMX 1390, where a lot of his team are pushed into that gully. And yeah, it's south spawn. It's dangerous to push into that gully, gully unless you know the enemy team's not there. Yeah, There's exactly. There's not going to be anyone there to meet them. So they're going to push up there as well. McMull's going to spot them out right now. So Comics is going to be the first man to be able to see him. End Station's being left back at base there. He's going to be watching out for the push. So there's always <laughs> a contingency here. But uh, so far, McMull copied a bit of damage and having to pull out. Yeah, he's taking a hit straight away. Oh. It's like taking about 300 points off him. He is uh, in a little bit of trouble. He's instantly repaired a track that was removed by Batman. But that now leaves him without the ability to do it again. And yeah, he's under a bit of sustained fire. We say we, you know, you, you point out that Batman knew from that scout where the other team was and he could afford to run up the gully and they're going to push hard on the cap now if they're quick. That's right. So right now, you know, the guys from Seeking Cumbers, they understand. They have a fair, they've gained a lot of intelligence here from these last few pushes. Yeah. Where they could sit there, big tanks in the gully, can't be seen now. Anato taking some shots across at Top Shelf. Top Shelf has been spotted now. I don't want to see end station. DJ's now is going to push straight up. He's going right around the back, and that's a good place to go. Fairly safe. They might crest this hill and see what's going on there. We are now are with comics. He's straight down that, that gully, and he's just going to try and spot out what's happening here because at the moment, the pace is being pretty well dictated by the sea cucumbers, and the tree pickers are just having to react right now. Dexter coming over that hill as well. No one spotted so far on the side of the cherry pickers by the sea cucumbers, but they are searching. They are looking and uh, they're trying to spot things out. Batman, for once, has actually stopped his tank, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, but it looks like, oh, hello, spot's going down. And that was end station managed to see. And it looks like the crew, uh, of course, from the tree pickers are making a push for the cap. 
Yeah, McMole, he's moved up, but he is the, was the, for a second there the only one of the tanks from the Cherry Pickers who was heading in a southerly direction. But he encountered his two teammates in the uh, oh, in the Pershings coming the other way, and they've now changed their mind and oh, decided McMull. they're going to have to come with him. <laughs> have a McMull. look at this. He's sprayed two shots, and Station is still alive oh, somehow. The cat is out of the bag, yes, though, now. And, of course, him. McMole now, you know, copying a bit of damage out from the yes, side. Top-tail trap moving it's straight comics. up. Straight up onto the cap there, and McMole going fairly low now. Comic's trying to poke his head over, but it's uh, it's a little bit difficult for him to really get <laughs> yeah. himself out there. He doesn't have amazing gun depression on that AMX 1390s. So I go to Comic's now. You can see uh, the turret really doesn't come down too far, so he can't go straight over that hill uh, and really just start shooting. He's going to get shot in the front before he does that. So now, now the cat's out of the bag. If you're on for young and old. We know exactly what the Cherry Pigs are trying to do now. Time is ticking down. This is a very close game. Both teams are without their T1s currently. They uh, they don't have those little scouts. Obviously, you saw End Station eventually die. Chapo now being spotted over towards the uh, the capture site there. Comics just poking back and forth at the moment. Yeah, well, look, I was going to say for a minute there that it looked like uh, the Sea Cucumbers maybe had this one. They'd started to push hard. They'd forced the rest of the team on the other side, the Cherry Pickers, to react to them. And the Cherry Pickers were pulling back, but they've changed their mind. They've now pushed back forward, and here they are looking at the cap. So, uh, yeah, that, this game is really seesawing. It's a real to and fro. Every time we think we start to see a swing of momentum, it's stopped and it's going the other way. But now Chapo and Top Shelf have stalled as well. They're unsure. They've lost their scout, and now they're not really sure what they're shooting at. All they know is that Comics was there over the ridge, but where has he gone? Well, it's not even comics I'm worried about. It's Batman. He's making a push for the cap. And Big Mole cleverly set himself back up there to try and catch Batman out. So you can see Batman now is trying to set himself up towards the top side of the map, but he's had to come straight on back through. We are seeing yeah. Chapo on top self making a move there. No Batman is no longer there. Anatoe's going to try and poke over there. He's a little bit side on right now, so he needs to be careful about the shots he can take. But now, looks like it's pretty aggressive play coming straight out of the CQ. Comes here trying to push off the cherry pickers off the cap. Oh, the damage down the top self. He goes very low down to 65. Yeah. D2 takes down Chapo as well. Oh. Wow, big game so far. Very, very well done by the Cucumbers, and that's pretty confident movements here from yeah. Anatoe as he comes straight on over to defend. So, you know, the, the Cherry Pickers got caught out and they paid for it. Yeah, they looked like they were almost set to start heavily hitting the cap and perhaps take the game, but just like that, two tanks gone. What was a nice even game has turned on them in a matter of a second. And as we've seen there, a couple of the players, particularly Batman, he's very excited about that, isn't he? Oh, Anato is unstoppable, by the way. Like, he's done damage to Trozos and Hermitic. Hermitic going to go very low. Troz trying to get close here. Oh, he's actually bounced off the T32. He's going to take a bit of damage. Anato oh. finishes the job. Hermitic wants a bit. No, oh, death and says the no, same. thank you. Mick Mole, the last man standing now. Look, what can you say for McMole? It's, it's all academic. He's just trying to uh, perhaps salvage a little bit of pride as he jukes it out with the uh, the other AMX of Batman. It'll be nice to get a kill on Batman. I'm no doubt he'll enjoy that, but he's not going to let him. Do it's it. not going to be a very very oh! nice taste in his mouth. I think Batman wanted to snake that one away. They're missing McMole. McMole goes straight is. in. Taken to Batman. from the back. Wow, that was quite a game. I think. Um, look. Earlier on in the game, we saw um, a real passivity coming out of both teams. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was, I was getting a little bit tongue-tied at some points as well, just trying to, uh, you know, to wrap my head around the strategy here. Yeah. Because it seemed like the opposite of what we saw between Mind Freak and Avant Garde. We actually yeah. saw, uh, you know, the end of the sea cucumbers push their way down that gully, which is often a death sentence if you're on the south spawn. Exactly. But the difference is this time is that they knew the cherry pickers weren't there. They knew that they were on the western side of the map. Yeah. That was a map that really illustrated how crucial it is to have a good scout and even in a small tank that may not have anything to to offer the other teams with gunnery but just good positioning and information was everything once they knew the other team had committed to the west side they were able to push hard up the right but as we saw even then that wasn't the, <laughs> the end of the tale things changed a couple of times in that map they did, and, and I don't feel the momentum shifted so much between the two teams, but it was definitely sort of periods of you know, consternation, real pressure being yeah, put on, and then yeah. periods of guys, you know, just sort of sitting back and, and yeah. waiting, and I like the methodical manner in which the sea cucumbers went about that game. There yeah. was no YOLO, there was no committing. No. You know, and we saw earlier on the day, Mind Freak, um, Avant read them like a book. They just committed. They committed yeah. to the city. They committed here. They committed there. Yeah. Avant go, they can't get out without us shooting them to pieces now. We've got them. Yeah. One of the biggest things in World of Tanks is maintaining, uh, you know, maintaining a sense of mystique about your positioning. Definitely. And making sure that you can correct your positioning if you have to. Exactly. And when you commit so hard to like, a town like that, like Mind Freak did earlier on, 
you're in a lot of trouble. So yeah. this time, I liked it. And you know, on the same, by the same token, Cherry Pick is the same thing. Yeah. They didn't commit too hard as well, but they just mm. got kind of caught out. That second, when uh, you know the Cucumbers came over that hill back at their base and just completely destroyed. Yeah, both, both the Pershings were sitting there and they just absolutely hammered. They were both gone within a matter of seconds. And exactly the same with the other tanks of their team. They all went down in pairs, like just bang, both gone. And yeah, it was decisive. And... They, yeah, they were absolutely hammered there in, a, in only a matter of seconds towards uh, the middle of the map. Yeah. The middle of the game, I should say. Yeah, that, that was a, a good game for the Sea Cucumbers, and they'll take a lot out of that. They're unsure, you know, that both these teams weren't really sure what they were going to find with their opposition due to the mixed nature, the mixed makeup of the teams. But, yeah, that's probably gone a little way to tell us that we have two very good teams, but one is a game up. Well, look. The next map is actually quite similar yeah. to Steps. So we're going to see Prokhorovka. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. It's going to be the second map here. And it is another open map. Yeah. There's another one of those maps with those undulations, with some valleys, with some gullies, with some ways to obscure yourself or, yeah. and, and your team as well. You can obscure your movements and strategy by using those terrain features there. So as you can see here uh, you know, on, on the screen, we've got the, the two spawns in the north and south side. Mm. We've got the train line running pretty much straight down the middle and that, that road over on the two line. So there, it doesn't look very hilly from here, but actually it is. There are a lot of undulations and ways to, to sort of hide where your tank is now. So we are, we're going to try and get... Uh, we're going to get our tank picks underway uh, very, very soon. And uh, we'll pretty much be into the game. So now, th these guys are going to have a little bit of think, A little bit of deliberation now. Because, yes, a, a strong showing from the CQ Cucumbers. But definitely, Cherry Pickers aren't out of it. And they definitely uh, they showed that they, are, they have turned up today. And they're here to play. But you know, they just capitulated just sort of at the end there. And they, they fell apart, it's safe to say. Yeah, it's, it was hard to, to really put your finger on what went wrong. They, uh, they were there. They were... Good positioning. They did look at a couple of times like they could perhaps take the match by the scruff of the neck and go with it. But just in that small little moment of perhaps indecision in the two, uh, in the two tanks there, the Pershings, and they paid for it. They sat still. They waited. Perhaps they, were on, they weren't on the defensive, but neither were they really going out and looking for the game. They just sat still, and the game came to them. And it came to them in a big way when they were both popped within a matter of seconds. As you said about the, this map on Prokhorovka, the terrain features a lot of opportunities for some hull down work. Yeah. Small, few little uh, structures in the center of the map there, just to the left of the train track. There's a couple of buildings, good yep. opportunity for the scouts to get up, get a look. Yeah, it's going to be a lot less mystery. Let's put it that way, I think, in this map. All right, so you guys can see there, that's the game screen. So waiting for the teams to pick their tanks. And the first picks are coming out straight out of the gates. Both teams taking the T1 and... Uh, that's never going to be a surprise for us. A lot of people ask why they're taking a T1. It's that tier one tank. They think, why? It doesn't do anything well. I mean, it's a common question to be asked, and I guess it's fair enough as well. There's a 42 tier point limit. Yes. You can only take a maximum of tier eight. You can't take tier nines or tier 10 tanks. Yeah. All right, so between seven players and 42 tier points, you generally will take five tier eights and two tier ones. You don't want to take in... Uh, seven tier sixes because they're just not as strong as those tier eights and they will lose. It's it's uh, mind free tried it once at Supernova. They took six VK twenty eight oh one into a game they did. and they got pasted. They did. It, 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 very typical of mind freak to do that. They're cheeky, um, but it didn't really pay off the way they would have liked it to. So definitely that is the way uh, that we usually see it. So picks coming out left, right, and sin here. So two T one. We got a T one. Uh, so we, all everyone's taking their T uh, ones. They're pretty much this, the picks are similar here, but when. The cherry pickers went to pick their 25100s. Sea Cucumbers responded and they picked up a T32 and a T69. Mm. So interesting interesting difference there in the pick. So how does that come into play in a map like this? Seeing the 25000s being picked up by one team and the other one going for a bit more of a you know, the medium comp, seeing the, uh, the 69 and, of course, the 32, which is a heavy tank. Yeah, well, see, that basically you've seen one team come out with some <laughs> what you might call a medium heavy agile sort of tank the 5100s and the other teams responded with the slightly smaller but more agile mm -hmm. still auto loader tanks as we see an IS3 being picked so there's our brawler that's interesting there's though. the I brawler find, I find it, that is really a, a tank that is most comfortable in a cityscape yeah. environment because its armor at the front is strong if you angle that front armor or well, it's it's kind of you kind of defeating the purpose of having that actual pike nose exactly. on that tank Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it before being picked in this. It just I want to see how they use it because in the open, an IS-3 can get slapped around from, from multiple directions. For sure. It wants to be in uh, the more close quarters environment where it can just headbutt the other heavy tanks and make yeah. it really hard for them to actually get any bullets through its hull. Yeah. It's not know. such a bad tank fr from the sides as long as it's only engaging 
a, a, another tank as an enemy. But if it gets involved in a fight with perhaps you know two or three auto loaders, just the sheer volume of damage coming its way is going to find the mark. Yeah. But the spaced armor on the IS-3 can be helpful if it's only up against one tank. Sure. The agility isn't such an issue. But yeah, like you said, you're open from every direction when you're on a wide open map like this. It's also a ridiculously like the gun is ridiculously powerful for tier eight. For yeah. tier eight, I mean, you've got a gun that does an average damage of three hundred and ninety. Yeah, and I mean that, that's, that's give or take numbers. That's give or take forty as well. Remember, yeah. I think it's oh, like there's a variance on either side of that number as well. So you can hit seriously hard with that gun, and it's, it's the BL9, so the 120 millimeter, uh, and it, the penetration is also quite strong as well. Not great, not crazy accurate. That's probably the only issue, and that's probably why it's more popular in that, that close, more close quarter environment because you just turn your gun around and shoot the dude in the face. Yeah, but well, you know, like if you use it right, and I'm sure these guys know how to. Uh, you know, you can definitely sort of iron out uh, some of those creases. Yeah, well, it is a tank also, the IS-3. It does have speed. <laughs> let's, not, yeah. let's not paint it as being a brick, like a mouse. Mm, but it, it does get out there and it does get up and boogie. It's just against these other tanks, it's not going to get up and boogie quite enough. But, hey, these guys have obviously got something in mind. Let's That's see right. what they do. That's right. So we're waiting on... Uh, actually, all the tank picks are pretty much sorted now, so... You know, once the tanks are picked, then the teams sort of sit amongst each other and go, um, you know, okay, who's playing what? Like, let's, let's sort out who's playing what tank when yeah. is basically uh, sort of, you know, they've they got to sort of delegate, I guess, those tasks as well. Because, I mean, the T1, there are some teams that have dedicated T1 players. Mind Freak has a dedicated T1 player. I know, yeah. uh, you know, whereas we saw from Avant Garde, you know, they hire out plays some T1s and sometimes yeah. Blade 12444 is the same. Exactly. So it, it depends. Like, not, and, Playing the team one isn't exactly a hero as well. You don't exactly get adulation. You know, you don't get all the kills. But y your job is important, as we've said multiple yeah. times. You know very well if someone's not playing it well because you won't have a clue where anyone is. That's right. And that they'll generally expire pretty early in the match when not played well. That's right. Yeah. Well, we're going to get into this one for you guys now. Both teams are ready. Need to make a slight change now in the game before we do jump in there. It's going to be the map of Prokhorovka here. We are going to... Yep, I've just changed that. We are obviously going to see... Uh, the cherry pickers go up against the CQ comes now. CQ comes got that first game under their belt, and it was uh, it was it was pretty it was a pretty intense game, but uh, you know not not much yolo. It was definitely they they, they kind of took their time. So let's see if things are any different now. Mm. We're on the map of Prokhorovka in our second semi final. Of course, the winner of this game is going to go into tomorrow's grand final against the victorious Avant Guard for the chance. Uh, well, actually, no, for they, they will definitely be going to China if they win that now. So yeah. let's let's make it happen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what these teams have got for us now. Of course, the cherry pickers need. Get a bit more confidence, you know, going. Get a bit more energy as well. And let's hope that the, the calls are coming through nice yeah. and clear and that they're feeling good. And let's not forget that this is also the backdoor ticket to the Tank Asia Masters Series 2 next year. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, they don't even have to... They don't have to fight through the, the extensive qualifier period. They get straight into that series as well. And uh, speaking of, there are a few uh, of, of the players who were in the victorious team of Season 1 here from PvP Super Friends. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that, that's pretty cool that uh, those guys have come across now as well. So, let's have a look at what we've got here. I, obviously, am with the CQ comers right now, and we're seeing interesting... Well, actually, not, not that interesting. Batman is going straight up the gas, as he likes to do. He is an intense player, but the rest of the CQ comers are heading wide. They're heading out over towards that eastern side. They're going to try Contact. and see... Contact. Oh, straight in the middle. Oh, Big Mullen, Batman. This could be a bit of fun. They're going to slam... They're actually not loaded yet. They haven't yeah. loaded their guns. A couple <laughs> seconds. A couple seconds, and they will be ready to fire. But they sort of just, uh, you know, passed by each other, said, how you doing, and uh, back yeah. to the work. They That's didn't the nature have any, of the autoloader. They didn't have any shells ready to go. Yeah. The, the autoloader, not only does it have a high reload time, but that reload time applies at the start of the round, and both those tanks encountered each other with no ability to fire. And so... While they have learned the position of each other, that's about all that was gained for that encounter. This is extremely aggressive play here from the sea cucumbers. They are pushing up that seven and eight line. They've left their little tanks, the T1s there to cover their flanks, but they are shoving straight down here. And as I said, they're using that train line to obscure their strategy. Their movements can't be seen easily. Uh, because they're hidden behind that ridge. As you can see, Mick Mole has been spotted in the middle there. Anato goes for a shot. And nice he's taken shot. A shot. That was yeah. a fantastic shot to uh, pick him through those trains as well. 232's got a pretty accurate gun, and of course he can just pop over and take the shot, but that was that was pretty impressive. Mick Mole now is uh, going to have to strike that one off and move on, but it's looking worse for wear after taking that hit. What, though, is happening with the Cherry Pickers? Well, the Cherry Pickers are heavily committed. In fact, I would say they're pretty much all committed. Down the uh, one line, they're going just down the uh, side of the road there and slowly edging forward, bush to bush. They've got their scouts pushing heavily forward and they've pretty much encountered no resistance. So the guys in the back in the heavies, they know that they can move unimpeded up this line. But that then raises the question for them, where are the sea cucumbers? 
Well, that's right. I mean, using that train line and having none of the cherry pickers go there has really allowed them to, uh, you know, to stay hidden and stay very much uh, undetected in, the, in their movements right now. However, the same can be said of the cherry pickers because N Station is the T1 that's been left back at base uh, here, uh, as you can see on my screen. And he's, uh, he's not doing much at all. He's just sitting back. He's trying to see if he can spot anyone pushing down that one and two line. Yes, and straight away he has now spotted them. Oh, dear. Top jump from Paul Smith. Oh, N Station too good. Go on. Takes down one. He's going to reload now. Paul Smith is going to try and hit him. He has copped a track there. In station now, just reloads. He can actually nuke Paul Smith completely. Paul Smith wasted those bullets now. So end station just gonna stay calm. No, there it is. gets picked up by the T32. That was Chapo over the middle. So trading T1s right now. DJ is trying to pop over on the other side of the map as well. So a bit of a push here coming out from the guys from the CQ comments there. But DJ, he takes that here, he backs right off. We see comics as well. He's sitting right around, but they have curled around the back. There. Yeah. So look at that position, straight down that six line. They use that train line to get in. Big Mile again in trouble. He seems to be everyone's favorite punchy bag in this game. <laughs> and uh, look at that, he's getting tracked through the mid as Dexter tries to get a shot in from now. But Big Mole now blinks out of existence. But the problem here, right, is that CQ Cumbers don't have anyone remotely close to their cap. Their closest take is at G5. G5, yeah, well, that's and, that's, and, that's, and I think that's, uh, that's Bridgie or someone. They don't have, that's Batman. Ooh. Okay, Batman's sitting back. There. And he's made a kill there. He's <laughs> made another kill, which... You know, you can, if you look at what the uh, the cherry pickers are doing here, they've sort of committed heavily forward down towards the cap, but some of their guys are staying back. They're not really doing anything fully, whereas at least the uh, the sea cucumbers are there in numbers in the centre and probably able to react in either direction. But look, numbers are even for both teams with just the scouts missing. So. Look, there's really everything still to unfold here in this game. And they're, and they're still have a fair bit of health as well. Mick Mole's been getting slapped around a bit as he's moving up and down the map, but that's what happens when you're a scout tank. You, you deal with that because that's yeah. part of your job, I suppose. Yep. Dexter trying to get over with that IS3. Haven't really seen that come into its own yet as a pick in this game, mainly because maybe CQ Cumbers were anticipating a head to head and it really hasn't happened now. So Anato, he's got the perfect tank to poke over here just to the right of Dexter uh, as he's sitting over on that train line. And now we can see Nugster. Just trying to get over with that T32. He's taking a hit there as well. And that's taking down his observation device now. Really important. Because now he's not going to be able to spot over that hill as effectively. Exactly. Like he's a, He wants to get rid of Batman. Batman is such an effective scout. If he can get rid of him, then his team can start to move with a little more freedom. But as long as Batman stays down there in the back Ooh. lines, any move at the cap is going to be, it's going to be known about. And those guys in the center of the map are going to be able to react. Interesting the way this one has worked out. It's almost as if they've almost swapped cap points. You can see on uh, on my screen here that the CQ Cumbers have positioned themselves around the middle. They're using that as a bit of a home base to sort of sally out from, you could say, and try and uh, make some sort of strikes on the enemy base while still defending their own. That is how you work on a small map. So Batman is just trying to go back and forth and just keep a constant flow of information yeah. coming back to uh, the CQ Cumbers just so they know when they need to turn their heavies and uh, get them moving. Because if you get your heavies out of position at uh, the wrong time, you can't get them back to stop a cap. It's, it's, you know, it isn't a huge. Well, it has to be most of a thousand meters by a thousand meters. But you know, make a wrong step or you know, get out of position, and you're going to find it very, very hard to get back. And if you're trying to, you know, return to your base, you're going to have to go straight through the open, and that makes you so vulnerable to the defenders just popping you. Yeah, well, as you pointed out, you, the whole team from the Sea Cucumbers are heavily sort of committed there into that center point, and that gives them command of the whole battlefield. They can see everything that's going on, and once coupled with good scouting, as Batman is uh, showing us here, he's very so just so much aware that speed is his armor, and he's constantly on the move, making it hard, op giving them the opportunity to waste shots, which is not such a big deal when they're the Pershings, but if one of the AMXs waste shots at him, they're caught in their dreaded reload timer. So, look, the, the match is starting to not really stagnate. Batman's pushing forward, but both teams yet to really make a decisive move. Mc, as Mick Moles Ooh. taking shots from Batman. I think Batman's going to go that. in. He's going to go in and clean that one up. I'm yeah. pretty sure now. Oh, but the, the, the trap has been sprung there. Batman copped a hit from Hermitech and uh, does get his engine uh, pretty badly messed up. Mick Mole, you know, always acting as the bait there to pull Batman out, but he's still very, very low. Batman's still looking healthy. Three minutes, 45 seconds on the clock. Now, let's talk about what happens if we start to approach a timeout when, when the time runs down. Well, when you get teams making perhaps overcommitted moves. You know, when the time starts to, to get low, you get teams knowing we, we may get past the point where we can make a cap, which is never a good situation to be in. And of course, certain rules come into play That's when right. there's no time. Well, exactly. Uh, you need to have an eight tier point advantage at the end of the timer to yeah. win the game. So you don't have to kill all their tanks per se. But if you, if you have an extra eight tier point, so a tier eight tank ahead of the enemy team still remaining, 
you will win the game. So yeah. right now, there is not that eight tier point advantage. They are even. They've both got two tier points. Uh, they've taken two tier points each. Look at Dexter, though. Copy some shots. Comics wants McMole, though. He's trying to head across the map. DJ's just sitting tight as well. They are pretty much sitting on top of the cap side here. We're going to roll with Comics. He wants to take McMole. They need that eight tier point advantage. All he has to do is pop him and take him out. McMole is acting as the bait. He knows what CQ comes to try and do. Comics hit the. He, he did hit the wreck there. Oh. Permatech going fairly low. Comics some shots from across the map. Now they have the eight tier oh, point oh. advantage. The CQ Cumbers know that they can sit tight here, but Trozos is not going to let that happen. He's going to come straight on him with the 5100. He's going to get nuked almost instantly, though. Comics is going to see him come around, and boom! Not looking good so far from the Cherry Pickers. Hermitech trying to come as well. Comics doesn't even care. He's just going to move around the tank. Hermitech copying shots as well from the side. This is all falling apart for the Cherry Pickers. Did you see that? Comics using the wreck of McMole's tank there as He's cover. He's still doing it. Yeah, they, we saw three shots directly impact that wreck. <laughs> oh my and Lord. look at that. That is brilliant play using the enemy tank as your armor, as it were, and he's hidden away. He's absorbed three or four shots, and now his team's on the cap. Look at the way that match turned on a dime. You know, it was it was McMull, like, knew that he... That all they had to do was, remember, get that one tier eight tank ahead of the enemy team, yeah. and they win. So, you know, we, we knew Comics was going to go in for that one now. The cap has been started, but it's only Chapo sitting over there, and Batman wants to deal with him. We see Anato and Nuxter fight it out here. Nuxter's got to turn his head, though. He's got a few more targets to shoot uh, to choose from here, and I don't really think he's going to be, uh, got to really get anywhere in this situation. Down to 19 health now. Look at D2. He's, yep, just not, even, he he's not even paying attention. He's going straight after Chapo. Chapo sitting on the cap. He's been spotted completely. He's trying to trying to get it done, but he, it's just him. It's well, him he's, against, you know, five tanks, and he's not going to last long He's got four tanks coming back to reset him while one guy does the cap at the other end and like yeah that's a no-win situation it's academic it's over yep. and we've already got a capture happening on the other end of the map Chapo's just now but you know he's just going to get gunned down these guys are auto loaders they just let him have it Look straight away from the middle of the map game yeah. two goes in favor of the CQ Cumbers and what a decisive victory for them as well yeah. after what is safe to say was a fairly sort of mellow period they yeah. really they, they dropped the trap on them yeah I, like you might think that two cucumbers seemed passive but Looking back, you can see the way they took that center point on the map. They had something in mind. They had something in mind, and I wouldn't mind betting that went exactly how they wanted it to go and expected it to go. As for the cherry pickers, you know, they started to commit down that left side. We saw them put all their forces down there. Yep. Then a little bit of hesitation when they didn't run into anyone. A couple of guys went back, wondering whether or not they were under attack at the cap. They snuck back. McMole took, <laughs> took some shots. Two of the tanks went back to help him, and it all fell apart from there. So I'm just waiting on to see if we, we have a replay here. Apparently, um, we might have had a 1390 on the side of the Cherry Pickers actually crashed to desktop there. So oh, we're really? Wait, we're going to wait and see what happened there. That would that would have been very, very unfortunate for him as well. Uh, a crucial moment as well towards the end of that game, having uh, sort okay. of falling out. So, you know, we might, we might see replay to that end. Wow, um, boy. You know, they, <laughs> they've gotten out of jail if that's the case. Well, yeah. Because, I mean, uh, and that's fair enough, though, as well. Like, you, yeah. you definitely, the last thing you want to happen is for your, your computer to crash on you as yeah. well. So we're going to see it. We will see a rematch there on that map. We're so going to have a forward. rematch, so we are still at 1-0. And, and not, a, not a bad thing as well. I think, uh, you know, Cherry Pickers now, um, uh, they've, they've sort of taken notice of, of, of what's sort of happened there. Yeah. They might try and rectify, uh, I guess, some of the issues they had. It is a complete replay, though, so same sides, I believe, same tanks as well. Same tanks. Uh, and everything will be sorted, so um, that, that's, that's going to be done there. So, But same tactics? I can't think. We of never know. No. Surely not. Like the no, not the losing part of it. No, no. We we have to see. Well, yeah. You know, how the tree pickers try and respond to this. And yeah. We saw them sitting up up on the sides here. And I talk about McMole a lot in that game because yeah. he was he was a key player. He was he was the running scout for the uh, for the cherry pickers. He got he got he got taken quite low. And this happens when you're a 3090. You've got to run yeah. up and down. You cannot just sit back no. and wait to get destroyed. No. So, you know, there is that risk involved there. And I've, I've talked about light tanks having that high risk, high reward aspect to them to multiple people. Yeah. And that, that's really how it is. So he took those few shots there and he knew if he went down, that would mean that the CQ Cumbers had eight tier points clear. Yeah. They could win even if it went to a draw. So they knew that they no longer could play passively. They no longer could wait it out. They had to make a move. And it sucks when yeah. you put in that position, but that's, that's, the way, that's the way the game works. You've got to do that. Uh, and uh, comics was huge. I mean, Hermitech pushed out, Trozos pushed out, both of them with fully loaded AMX 5100s yeah. and couldn't kill him. No. They couldn't kill a 3090 with 850 health. That's right. It was incredible. The, the use by the, uh, the CQ Cumbers of their lights 
their light tanks, their scouts, was just fantastic. With the same as Batman, we saw Batman running up and down his half of the field there. Just every once in a while, he always maintained speed, but he just would peek up over the hill and drop down again just long enough that he they got the sight, got the uh, the information to his team, and he would disappear just till the uh, the information was no longer accurate, yeah. and he would stick his head up again. But always moving, always at speed. Just copybook use of a light scout tank. I'm really loving Batman and comics in those 3090s right yeah. now. They're really dynamic. They're really, um, they're really sort of, they understand what each other's doing. And of course, yeah. being from the PvP Super Friends team that won season one of the Tanks Asia Masters series, you'd expect that. You'd expect that level of expertise coming out from them. But they have been on point all game. They've been back and forth, and they, they I don't really think they've made a mistake. I think uh, you know, a lot of the stuff they did, and it was just picture perfect. The circle jerking around, uh, you know, that, that, that dead tank there from comics, which is perfect, and that's yeah. what you need to do, because you, you know that they, you know, the enemy team, and that would have been the, the cherry pickers there, needed to kill comics to even up that eight tier points that they were behind. Yeah. But to do that, they pushed him, and they pushed out at him, and yeah. let themselves just be crushed. Yeah. So I, I, I love the way that it was played. You know, there was aggression there from uh, you know, the sea cucumbers. They were aggressive. They pushed very deep. They were pretty much sitting on top of the cherry picker's cap, but they, did, well, they weren't going because they didn't want to reveal their position. They, yeah. they made sure all their bases were covered. Yeah, that's it. There's, we actually saw two of the tanks sitting just outside of the cap circle by only a matter of 10, what we would say is 10 feet or so. And they just sat there knowing, no, the other team's going to have to come to us. They're going to have to come in and commit when our guy comes in to, as you said, create that eight tier point difference. Yep. And yeah, that was an exciting match. That's a, it certainly has me excited for what we might potentially could see tomorrow. I can't wait. I actually <laughs> I can't know. wait. Seeing avant-garde as well, and it's a very different style that's going to be yes. coming out between uh, avant-garde and, and either of these teams as yeah. well, by the way, because, um, you know, I like those little nuances that we often see. I've seen a lot of European water tank stuff. It's like, oh, I'll pick a 1390, you pick a 1390, we're both going to pick 50 to 100s, let's just skip the tank yeah. pick and let's just play with the same tanks. Yeah. So yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of thinking that's been put into these games, and uh, yeah, there's a lot on the line. There's yeah. a lot on the line. But, you know, let's see which one of these teams really turns up today and uh, really puts in the effort because tomorrow, obviously, uh, it continues. We're going to have a grand final match uh, uh, between the winner of this one and Avancard. Mm. But right now, they need to focus on the job at hand and uh, we're just <laughs> waiting for the guys to get ready here in chat. Yeah, so, to reset, uh, yeah. yeah. It was, that was the, when you talk about contrast of playing styles, they were, CQ comes, they were very fluid. They, they really seemed to flow around the battlefield and they were able to adapt to small changes, but... Once again, it really did seem that the plan they had worked. Yep. They, I, I don't think if we spoke to them that they'd be disappointed with how that went, and I think it pretty much went exactly how they would have foreseen it. Yeah, I liked it. I, I yeah. like what they did a lot. So, all right, both teams are ready. So we're going to be back into the remake of this one. It's awesome. going to be Prokhorovka, same side. So we're going to see the Southern Spawn uh, coming out, I believe, uh, from the Cucumbers. And we're going to see the, the tree pickers on the top side again. Yeah. So much to say, and the, the tank picks have to stay the same. They have to be, they, they have to, yeah, they have to be the same here, just to, yeah. you know, to recreate as much as possible the game. They're obviously not going to like walk through the same stuff naturally. No. But definitely, uh, you know, in the event of a, like a technology failure, they made the right decision. I think yeah. they've done a very, very good job of managing things on stage. And we're into game two yet again. It's going to be the cucumbers versus the cherry pickers. And both teams now got to be of an understanding of how the other plays. Let's see how that comes into this game. Let's see if they change anything up as a result. Well, if you were the winning team, why wouldn't you go with the same tactic? It worked then. It could work again. You just never know. But let's see what happens here as they begin to roll out. As we see uh, up the center, McMole going straight at it in his scout, in his AMX. He's going to go look, play peekaboo over the center of the map and just see what he can see. But the rest of the team, fairly defensive positions here at this early stage. Uh, Paul Smith is going to go and have a look over the center line at the train track, which is an interesting position for a scout, but really we didn't see a lot of activity down there. More just used as a, as a, a transport corridor by the sea cucumbers as we have our initial contact in the center of the map. Again, comics bit mold aren't loaded yet, so they're just they're trying to, you know, just make sure that they're aware of each other. They're loaded now, by the way. Sorry, I, I, I was wrong. Uh, yeah, their shots they're, traded. They're so shots being fired, and they're trying to, you know, get as much damage as they can for free. Free damage is good damage. Uh, there's no kind of bad damage, but at this stage of the game as well, you want to try and whittle your, the enemy team down as much as possible, because when it comes to an out-and-out -out fight, you will have that advantage, numerically speaking. So again, you know, McMullen and Comics are just going to spot each other, and McMullen's going to have a crack at him as well, so they'll blink in and out of uh, each other's vision for now. And that's kind of like the first line of defense. The two scouts sort of circling around, and I feel like we're going to see a little bit more of a traditional Prokhorovka style coming out here from the Cherry Pickers. While, while the CQ Cucumbers actually doing much the same thing. They're actually uh, you know, fairly well positioned uh, looking to head up sort of the middle of the map. Yeah, it's a very... Uh, not, not what you'd call a passive uh, start. We do see that the scouts getting actively involved and 
sniffing around there at the centre of the map, but we don't really see any activity yet from the bigger tanks, not particularly on the uh, cherry picker side of things anyway. What are the big tanks doing on your side? Well, at the moment, Anatoly is in that T32, so he's sitting inside this village, and, and again, you know, he's going to use that little ridge, and oh, Chapo taking more damage than he'd like to at this early stage. Bridge Burner will go down. Bridge Burner, again, sacrificing himself to get some damage down on Chapo and some information straight towards the CQ Cumbers. Now, Dexter wants to try and line up a shot there, but Chapo only taking those two hits there. So, you know, he, no one's pleased about taking hits, but he, uh, he'll be reasonably uh, happy with being able to get out of that one again. McMullen and Comics going to spot each other. DG's and Dexter are in this village here, though. They're just trying to move across, but in the middle of the map, we see McMullen popping a hit there. But on this side of things, yeah, McMullen taking hits, but the AMX 5100s and the uh, T32s, they're both sitting back at the back of the map, just having a big, long sniper view of things. Even though Chapo has taken some damage, they're only really just pinging away at the scouts at this early stage of things. Oh, but that being said, Batman hits the deck, though. Comics with McMullen still trading shots, so this is such a crucial part uh, of the game that we're seeing now, that Batman going down early on. This is a lot earlier than anyone expecting to go down. Look at this, though. The response, though, is very quick and very decisive coming out of the Cucumbers. They are pushing straight down the guts here. We do see Deidre's, Anato, and Dexter all moving their way down. They know that Nuxer and Chapo are sitting back. They know those 5100s are taking their time. And Dexter is going to try and get up and close to them now. Uh, as we see, you know, Paul Smith, he's going to probably spot them out fairly soon. McMull in the middle of that map there. And he's probably not really aware of what's going on. But yes, first contact has been achieved. And I think Dexter has been spotted over on that side. I want to I want to see how Nuxter and Chapo respond to this now. Because DGC is going to be there as well. And Anatos is three pretty big tanks. He's got a 69, an IS-3, and of course a T-32. All pretty strong. Chapo's going to try and crest this hill here. This might be a little bit of a dangerous decision. No, he's going to go straight over Nuxter as well. He's not really going to uh, spend too much time doing that now. So as you can see, Dexter and oh. DJ's are just trying to get out there. Hider, oh, that's not good. Chapo's going to get tracked on down. He's not going to be too happy about that one. And I think, uh, he's, you know, Nux is now going to have to respond to that as well. Yeah, he's just going to go back up towards the middle of the map now. So again, Sea Cucumbers, despite losing Batman, have actually shoved the Cherry Pickers off their base. Yeah, Anato took a shot there from Troz, I believe. It may have been over up in the corner of the map. But Dexter has crested the line, and he's now pushing in. That's a... Uh, means someone else is going to have to shoot at him, perhaps Hermit or Troz, but now Nuxter and Chapo have got to turn around and come back to defend the cap, which means, you know, they have, well, I thought Anato might have continued now that someone else was there to draw the fire, but yeah, this is uh, getting all mixed up here, just in the center top of the map. That's right, and actually Dexter and DJs have now swapped positions. They're now sitting exactly where the 5100s were before. Nuxter does not want to be there at all. He's going to take quite a few shots. Chapo's revealed as well. Comics is going to pop over. DJs will take the kill. Nuxter now, he's in deep, deep trouble. Numbers come up, 287, 378 off Nuxter. Nuxter dead at 268 damage. D Dexter and DJs are looking straight at him, and they're just waiting for the reload. Dexter will have his reload back in a second. Caught between a rock and a hard place have been the uh, the cherry pickers now. McMull, I don't even know what he's doing. He's trying to run into the middle of this one. Comics is just going to shoot him from afar. Now, well, and, uh, McMull needed to come back. From the cherry pickers' point of view, they could not see Dexter. They could not see Dexter or DJs. They were hidden. They were camouflaged. And just beautifully, they've been absolutely smashed. So on my screen, you can see Dexter now. He's sitting uh, up towards the base here. He's just moving that IS-3. And uh, he's sitting tight. A lot of tanks now crucially being lost already on the side of the there cherry There they pick. are. CQ comes now, they know they got the advantage. They lost Batman so early on, and yet they've still managed to turn the tides. It's, just, it's a fantastic work. They know, they knew that they had the cherry pickers caught in that middle there. McMullen again being revealed. He's just going to try and run up the middle. We do see DJ's and Dexter on my screen now trying to get some shots on him here. Oh, just going to head up there in the corner of the screen. You can quite see that. You can see him in the middle of the map. Comics though, he's sitting at that middle rock and he's going to take shots and that's going to be all it takes there. Look at this Batman up on his feet on stage there with his mask on. He's, he's passionate, puffed. isn't he? That's right. <laughs> he really is. Now, only two tanks left for, uh, you know, the boys, the cherry Yeah, Troz and Hermit. Holding hands in the 5100s. Haven't, uh, haven't taken a lot of da any damage, should I say. But I don't know how much they've really done. They're kind of sitting back, and I wouldn't call them campers per se, but they've definitely been ostracized from the rest of their team. Yeah, it was unfortunate there. Once Dexter and Dejus came over, they managed to achieve camouflage and managed to sit in a bush. They were completely missing. That forced Mole to come back. He had Tross. to go looking, and yeah, it all fell apart yeah, from them for there. They've been revealed now, of course, and Troz is going to take a few hits. Comics is, yeah, I've had my shots. I'm going to now move straight along. Anatoad's going to move straight in, though. He, he knows that, uh, you know, he can use this little hillock up in front of him just to poke his turret over. And he's, uh, look, the fact is, Cherry Pig is now outnumbered, and they're going to be outmaneuvered very quickly. Those 5100s are quick. They yeah. are fast, but they don't have the numbers here. They can't really cap, and they can't really defend on the side of the Cherry Pig. Now, Dexter moving up the ice three. Troz going straight in there. End station, just uh, trying to keep everyone at arm's length here. 
doesn't really want to fight at all. DJ's Comics is the man that's circling around Trozos. Trozos using that dip in the ground there to try and protect himself. Comics is going to wait until his team catches up and then he's going to push over that hill. Hermitech copying a hit there as well. And a toe type one in response though. He's going to pop back down. Troz now trying to poke over. Oh, oh the bang. T1 Look behind Troz. Look at the damage and Troz is going to wow. drop there. Comics will do the work there. And Anato trying to push over and Hermitech gets just trashed. In quick succession, they went down so fast once they got. So once the yep. rear was taken on that 5100, yep. it was all over. Very, very well played by CQ Compass there. Yeah. I know they lost Batman, like, uh, and I'm not saying he, he's the team, but when you lose that 1390 uh, early on, you such it's such a clear disadvantage. Yeah. They lost Batman though, but they did gain their knowledge of the position of Nugster and Chapo. On those, you know, on those 69s, they were sitting sort of in the middle of, uh, you know, on on the other side of that railroad. Yeah. I think and. Uh, so even though they couldn't see him at that time, they knew after they lost Batman, they knew they could just pincer around. They could come from the south and the north, come straight around, yeah. and capture them against that train line hill because you can't yeah. just drive up over it with no speed. Yeah. So uh, straight after they did that, they knew as soon as we have the information, we have you outnumbered and outgunned, we can yeah. take you care of you quickly because uh, you know there was there was an auto loader there as well. Efficient, effective, yeah. put themselves clearly in the lead, and then they just dictate the flow of the game. Sit on the cap, take their time, mm. and take the game in their own hands. Well, I was quite surprised that the cherry pickers, they did not see D Juice and Dexter sitting at the back there. And like they would have to have known they were there. They saw them for a second, but once they achieved camouflage, they seemed to slip from the mind of the cherry pickers. And then they had to commit a scout back there to have a look, but by then the damage was done. The other two tanks had been caught in the middle, and yeah, wow. But like, look at some of the numbers there from uh, their team, Comics. He's managed to punch out That's over 3,000 damage in that an is, AMX 1390. That That's impressive play. That is very that is impressive. Really, really impressive from him. And, and DJ's, of course, you know, a strong performance there. Yeah. Uh, and Dexter in, in the IS3 doing damage, but a 30, uh, 3K damage on an AMX 1390 is fantastic. And he's still alive as well. So that really, uh, that really lends merit to Comics' uh, you know, survivability. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't go in and take all this damage. He plays safe. He knows when to push over. He knows when exactly. to attack. And, uh, you know, from there, the rest was history, really. Yes. And so were the cherry pickers. And he garnered those opportunities due to the play of his teammates. Once they started to push hard from the front, the heavy tanks couldn't afford to turn to face him and try and deal with him. They had their own bigger things to worry about. Yep. But little did they know the biggest thing to worry about was him. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, and, incredible. You know, you don't always take that roaming 3090 seriously. In no. that position, you're no. worried about their 5100s. But yeah. I mean, the only damage, I mean, there wasn't a lot of damage done by the Cherry Pickers in that game. Trossos, Hermitech. Yeah. They did most of the damage there. Uh, I, th I think, uh, you know, Nux and the T32 didn't manage to get any down. McMole no. as well. And McMole was doing a lot of scouting. But, you know, like, he wasn't able to lay down any shots. I mean, you don't really want to stop in the middle of the map on the 3090 and try and do damage. But <laughs> no what way. I'm saying is that, yeah, he was, he was you know, unfortunately not able to contribute to yeah. those fights. He got taken out, uh, you know, a little bit too early on in the piece. wasn't able to really stamp his mark in the game. Well, Trozos and Hermitech, a lot of their points were just, I think, really sniping at guys coming over the train track, yeah. taking a shot as they came over. Once again, once those tanks disappeared from their screens, yeah, there's no way for them to do that damage from way back where they were. It's almost like... The, the cherry pickers are of two minds. It's like this segregated inside their own team. I'm not saying like there's divisions or anything, but it's no. like we are seeing, uh, you know, Hermitech and Troz kind of do their own thing. Oh, but they're both playing the yeah. 51 100s. They're sitting back. But it seems like it's always one or other of those groups that just get nuked straight away. There's yeah. never any point where both, you know, components of that team come together and actually can conduct a firefight properly. It seems they're yeah. always getting picked off while they're separate. So we're going to take a bit of a timeout and get some reset done on those computers. So that's fine because I, I do want to talk a little bit more about this one. We saw, uh, you know, some, some fairly standard tank picks, but the 232s yeah. came out there. On the map of Prokhorovka now, I think 132, I understand why you take that, but two, I think it really hampers your mobility on this map. There was only 139, 250, 100s. And yeah. uh, I really think that that let them down. The Especially lack of the way they were used or yeah. not used as the case yeah. was there. Both with They sent both of those heavier tanks, the mediums and the heavies, sitting in the back corners like they expected the, uh, the sea cucumbers to just come straight through for the cap. But we knew that was never going to be the case. I don't know if they thought they might see everyone crest the hill in the centre yep. and they'd be able to pick them off like a duck shoot, but it just didn't happen. And once the, uh, the two T-32s were forced to commit up the centre line, they were heavily exposed. Yep. You know, a heavy turret isn't going to help you when there's guys just swarming across behind you who've got your whole tank exposed, big, beautiful backside waiting to take a shot. It, <laughs> And I know Batman, yeah. Batman can't resist. Yes, Batman honest, like can't resist. And, and his team did not. And uh -oh. they, they disposed of him in pretty quick fashion once they were isolated like that. And they were never really working well in conjunction with the 5100s. I know maybe the thought was that they would sit out there and draw fire for the 5100s. But if you're just trying to draw fire, do it with your scouts. 
Yeah. Use the scouts to help expose positions. That's right. And it didn't really happen that way. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's safe to be said for these guys in the CQ comes as well. On average, they're the youngest team that we've, we've got showing up here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's almost like we're seeing that the paradigm is a lot of the younger players, uh, that real aggression. It's not unbridled. It, it's calculated aggression, that, but it's it very well, much so. It's well executed. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing, you know, and uh, Troz and Hermitech, and I'm not, I'm not calling him old farts. That's not what I'm saying at all. But <laughs> I know, like, I know, like, being from, like, a Panzac Assault as well. Yeah. Uh, historically, they have been slower players. We saw Avant Guard, which is mostly made up of Panzac Assault and, um, uh, Marauders players, yeah. uh, and those guys, uh, and Raiders, should I say, they, they, to start with, Avant Garde was slower. They, yeah. did, they, uh, they camped it up a bit. Yeah. I'm going to say, they camped it up. So we might be seeing a little bit of the old school paradigm coming out there from those two guys. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, they, they weren't camping, but they were keeping their distance, and we didn't see them until the end of the game, and they came out, and yeah, they got a bit of damage in between them. The only one of them they got a kill was Hermitech. Yeah, exactly right. Like, a lot of their damage, I think, was caused fairly late in the game, too, yeah. if we can be... It was, it was, by it's was it's too harsh late. to say. It was when it was pretty much over. Yeah. And that was damage that was caused because the sea cucumbers were willing to start, you know, just throwing men at the wall, as it were, and just, yeah, we can afford to take damage because we know we're going to wear you down. It was all educated. It was, it was, they understood. They knew yeah. what was going on the map. They said, yeah. okay, well, we need to, you know, systematic, you know, take this tank down, take this tank down, mm. one by one. And they knew, when you take a tank down, it's not just a tank, it's a gun. It's a gun that's not going to shoot you back. Exactly. And exactly as soon as they did right. that, you, you know, if you can just jump on one tank, take that gun out of the fight, the next time you guys go head to head, if you do, they're going to have less guns. You're going to yeah. be able to do more damage to them quicker. And there's a good chance you'll be able to take out more of their guns uh, you know, than they can. So it's, it's, it's a landslide advantage that you can develop. Yeah, it becomes uh, in strength in numbers in yeah. the end where you can just start throwing men at them knowing, you know, kill one of ours for one of yours. Exactly. It's all over. And so we see ourselves in the position we are now where it's a two-game advantage. 2-0 two over towards CQ Cumbers. Now, Cherry Pickers, um, you know, they, want to, they definitely want to pick this one up, of course. It kind of goes without saying. But yeah. don't forget, this is for their chance to play uh, you know, in the grand final tomorrow. Yeah. I think a lot of them would like to go up against their brothers there, uh, Avant Garde. I think they, uh, there's, a, there's a bit of rubber there, I'm sure. Uh, friendly, of course. They it's are, understandable. Yeah. They're, all, uh, they're all good mates, but I'm sure they'd like to you know, be able to uh, you know, spare each other on in that game. But they're, they're at the risk of capitulating here pretty hard. Um, you know, they're on a knife edge. It's 0-2 it's, it's down. And... CQ Cumbers have been pretty much infallible in a lot of the things that they've done so far, really. I think, uh, you know, Batman made that error of getting sort of caught out on Prokhorovka, but, hey, they made up for it. They, you know, they, they knew they had to act. And I said, the second Batman went down, bam, you saw straight away CQ Cumbers pushing up that train line. Still, yeah. of course, obscured by the, the hill, but they, they knew they had to act. They had to be decisive because once yeah. you start letting yourself bleed tanks, you slowly lose your control more and more of, of the game. So now, I think we're pretty much... Uh, I've got, oh, ooh, that's awkward. I've got to re-invite Mick Mullins very, very quickly, and uh, we'll get him on into this game. And he'll uh, be ready to go. So the next map is Mines. 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 This is going to be interesting. It's a, As we saw in the uh, previous series we had, Mines as the third map. It was a great map to finish on, a very exciting encounter, where uh, both teams were perhaps a little more... Uh, tactically sound than they were in their earlier maps but after already seeing the way CQ Cumbers have played and <laughs> anyone that tries to question their tactics so far is dreaming they've been yeah. impeccable and uh, yeah. so it's going to be really interesting to see what they bring to bear here uh, and, I, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow already from either of these teams if these guys can bring it back I, I, I cannot wait to see them so go ahead but hey let's not get ahead of ourselves now the ready calls are pretty much coming out so the map of mines okay uh, we had it today already we did see uh, Avant Garde go up against Mind Freak on it and that was the closest of the three yeah. it was it's a balanced map and we saw that sort of come out in the game we've got the hill in the middle the islands down the uh, the western side and then we've got the village on the, uh, on the east so there are a multitude of avenues that you can try and take to try and you know make the assault on your opponent or try and you know, gather information. And I yeah. thought uh, you know, it has those opportunities to be aggressive and to sit back and, and camp up a little bit. Let's be well, what are you so, seeing in the lineups there that, that suggests something to do with the tactics that we used here? Yep, so uh, right now what we're seeing, especially coming out from the CQ Cumbers, 2.30.90, no surprise. They're coming to Batman, hand in hand, straight down the middle and uh, definitely doing some scouting. They yeah. to, I think they want to take the hill. I really do. Yep. Uh, and I think almost to a certain extent, the cherry pickers are going to let them. Uh, but we'll, we'll get onto their lineup in a second. So we've also got Anatole on his beloved T32. Sure. Awesome tank on this map. That hill in the yeah. middle is so good for a T32 because he can't really be hurt. He just pokes his turret over the hill, can shoot, exactly. can spot, and can't, like his turret is legitimately impenetrable from the yeah. front. Yeah, hull down play. It's all about it in and the center can't, here. And they can't hit 
that, that weak hull of the T32 when there's a hill in the way. So you know, that's going to be good. So it looks like, you know, we might be heading for a bit of a, uh, a, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a hill push from these Center guys. Center map slugfest. Yep, two T1s, the T69, IS3. So Dexter loves that IS3. Uh, and and DG is going to be on that 69 as well. They might just, uh, you know, position themselves wherever they need to. We might see the IS3 go hill. He might go to the village as well and maybe try and get some head-to-head -head going on. But we're, yeah. uh, we're waiting. So I think... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll check where, with everyone's ready, so, okay. We'll Over on the cherry picker side of things, it, it's, it's not that dissimilar. We've got Chapo and Paul Smith, of course, in the T1s. And then we see uh, McMole running in the AMX 1390, as we've seen him so far. And, and he doesn't do too bad of a job of that either. As, uh, the rest of the guys, though, we've got the T32 that will be doing, as we said, that centre brawler. As yep. is very, uh, a very usual play style on this map in a tournament. Um, I think we've got what, about 20 seconds to go before we're ready to launch here. Yep. Uh, we've got a T69, so we've got some agility. Two AMX 1390s. They yep. changed one up there at the last minute. So we've got two AMX 1390s okay. and an IS3. Yeah, so the, yeah, that, that's what we're going to see from the, the CQ comers. And yeah. I'm not altogether surprised by that at all now, is we're going to get straight on into this one. So I'm going to be on their side as well. Uh, I think because, and I, I was trying to get onto this before, I think because we didn't see two 3090s picked up from uh, the Cherry Pickers, that, yeah. that super mobility comp, that they're not even going to try and contest the hill. But we'll have to see uh, you know, how, they, how they try and work this. Comic's actually not even heading for the hill. He's heading around towards the islands. He's going out towards that eastern side. Uh, but what's going on over on the Cherry Pickers side of things? Well, we've got the, uh, one of the uh, T32s. He's heading up on the... No, sorry, that's one of the AMX. Uh, it's the 5100. Camouflage making it a little bit hard to see there as he was moving along, but he's taking up a sniper position. Can he use that uh, big auto loader to effect? He obviously expects to see people up on the hill. I think we all expect Whoa, to see people up on the hill. Oh, McMull having the center a bad fight day. is on. Yeah, he's, he's got that shot over on the Eastern Island. That was because Comics were sitting behind that bush right here. Easily done. You're not spotted. And McMull was sort of, you know, pushing quite a long way out without being seen. Now, guess what? Anatoly's doing work. He's using that T-32 to spot the enemy on the hill. Now, next to Herbie Tech are both revealed. They know it. Big Mole is as well. The information is coming in. It drips and traps, but it is coming in a lot faster for CQ Cumbers than it is for the Cherry Pickers now. Cherry Pickers trying to, uh, you know, get an understanding now, feel their way out uh, as to as to what's happening, uh, you know, with the other team. But, you know, Top Shelf and Nugster, they're sitting there with those 69, uh, yeah. and they're, they're trying to make something of it there. Yeah, well, it's, you know, Top Shelf went up and had a look in the, in the uh, 1390, but when the first thing he sees is the T32 pointing at him, he's got to change his mind and quickly. He has to back off because... What are you going to do? What's he going to do? Unload his whole auto load and then be out of the game and for hope, a short period of time. And hope one hits the commander's hatch of the 32? Yeah, it's just not worth it. He's more important as eyes, and so he's left that fight. Left it to the T32s to face each other over the top of the hill. That stands to reason now. End Station going to make his way across on those eastern islands as well. Batman and Comics are pushing this one with impunity. You can see them coming straight across. Batman, you know, these, these guys are holding hands. But have a look at this. Nuxter in big trouble right now. He's now getting shot on the side. You can see the shots coming out. That has got to hurt. Taking a fair bit of damage here down to 1082. End Station is actually pushing up in that... Uh, in that T1 as well. I want to flick to that just for a second. You can see now, he's uh, just got to set himself up so we can try and see if he can spot on that item. But Trozos has been revealed. Guess where Troz is sitting? Right at the freaking back. Yeah. Right at the back. He's what sniping. What a surprise. Yeah. What a surprise. That Batman sort of uh, on that island as well. He has spotted Mick Mole now. Comics there. Those guys will be able to support them. Mick Mole, though, despite taking the damage, he's undeterred. He's still trying to help out. Top Shield's now coming straight off the hill on that 69. Oh, there's some big shots being traded in the center there. Nuxter, someone has hit him in a beautiful spot. I couldn't be sure where it was, but we'll see if we can get a look at the tank and spot the damage. On all sides, these yeah. guys are, are getting surrounded here. You can see Dexter. Oh, look at the side of the turret. He's taken a beautiful shot into the side of the turret, and surprising that that's done that much damage to a T32. Well, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, right at the moment, I think I'd, I'd be a little bit concerned right now uh, if, for the guys from the tree figures. Now, look at this. Anatoly's Anatole's pushing getting in that aggressive. T32. He has caught the shot in that hull. He's still got 918 health right now. Top shield pulling back for a bit of a shot. Can he side scrape this? He doesn't have great side armor. No, the track goes down on Anatoly. Good shot on the top shelf, though. Not a great reload time, but is he top shelf? Can't be a better punishment there, but they're almost ignoring him. They're trying to take out Dexter in that IS-3 as yeah. well. I'm not sure what they're shooting at. They are definitely going for Dexter. Chapo hits the deck in that T1 right now. DJ's Always now pushing up on Nuxter. Nuxter in a bit of trouble now. He's got three guns pointed right at him. Ooh. He gets completely blown up as well. And in the meantime, uh, you know, all of the guys from CQ Gums are pushing up. And Troz, camel like a boss. Yeah, he's still sitting at the back and just sniping away every every uh, 18 seconds or so, unloading that <laughs> complete six-shot autoloader. But top shelf, he's in reverse, and he... Well, he doesn't really have anywhere to go. And they just run him down. That is absolutely brutal. 
It's a complete rollover here. And the here. cap's on. Complete and utter rollover. Tross is up on that hill there. He's got, he's, he should have a full clip. I hope he does now. Uh, but he's, uh, you know, he's got the targets he can take down. He can take down Batman potentially, uh, you know, fairly quickly. DJ will be a little bit tricky, but Comics is going to surround him as well. So Tross is always the last man standing, always managing to hold on here. But he doesn't have the teammates to work with him now. Time is ticking down, but it's not really going to be a matter of time. It's going to be a matter of what? It's going to be a matter oh, of seconds. Yeah. Really. Tross now he's tried straight for a into the enemy team, and he knows. Tross sits back and he goes, yeah, I'm pretty screwed here. Wow. So with that, a 3-0 going in favour, of course, of the CQ comes and what a fantastic, fantastic series from play. them. Barely made a mistake at all, and they should be very happy with themselves, and I wouldn't blame them. Fast match. Fast match, tactically sound, impeccably executed, and look at that. We see our second team through to the final. So very, very impressive. And like, let's let's talk about that as well. Like, in that last game, it was just clinical. They they got up on the island, they got up behind them, uh, they got up behind the cherry pickers, and they just wasted them. We saw even Anato go up to the hill. So there were three directions in which they were being fired upon. Yeah. Uh, you know, by the Seeker comes, they were in deep, deep trouble now. So the GGs will roll out. Yeah. And again, in our semi finals, I didn't expect to see this at all, but the Seeker comes have really turned up today, and it's going to be another 3 0 series. Well, the, the, the use of the AMX 5100 there as a sniper, it, I don't know, I don't know what to make of that. He never really got involved in the game, and, you know, they're probably valuable tier points that could have been used in something that could have got involved in the center of the map. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I mean, the guys are shaking hands now. We'll probably yeah. uh, pop to the stage in just a second. We'll, we'll have a bit of an interview then. Camera's on the stage there, having a few photos taken. And uh, I'm going to go and see if I can have a chat to uh, Old Mate Bridgebender about that game. I may follow you up. Well, hands being shaken left, uh, back and forth here. And, well, I don't know if we expected that one really at the end of the day. We thought the cherry pickers... You know, coming with a very strong lineup, especially on paper, uh, would be uh, very, very uh, formidable here. But And the games were good. The games were close. But that last one on Mines, Sea Cucumbers, absolutely frightening. Uh, just the way they push into it, straight in. So much confidence as well. Where they really backed themselves pushing into those engagements. It was, it was really, really impressive. Well, that match was almost over before we really got a chance to, to, uh, to comment on, on the positioning of a lot of the tanks. We never really got to see what tactics were trying to be brought to bear by the Cherry Pickers. It was over before it started. Yeah, it really was. And it, it, it was the tank picks. It was, uh, you know, their positioning on the map as well. You know, the guys were just, they were, they were so, so, so clinical in what they did. They pushed exactly the right spots. Uh, and the way they gathered the information, but not only gathering it, but the way they processed it as well. The way they interpreted the movements of the cherry pickers there allowed them to always be a step ahead. Yeah, definitely a step ahead is exactly the right way to describe what we saw there. It did seem to know what, they seemed to know what the opposition were doing. Sea Cucumbers seem to have a fair idea. Every bit of information that came in about Cherry Picker's positioning, they seem to know, it. right, this is what that means. This is what they're doing. This is how we react to it. This is how we take advantage of it. And there was there was no sort of, there was no point at which they were sort of reluctant or reconsidering uh, where they were going. We saw that from Mind Freak in the first game on Lakeville. They saw the 3090 push Lemming Valley and they did nothing. Yeah. Very, very different uh, sort of behavior here. Uh, you know, from the sea cucumbers, they reacted, they were decisive, and they were impactful. Everyone made a difference as well. And also yeah. a lot of T1 damage coming out as well. And Station was more than happy to move up with comics and Batman. He yeah. was like, you guys are going up our stuff, and I'm a T1, but I'm going too. They were constantly moving the line of battle up, 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 and putting pressure on the sea Yeah, I, I think you the used the right word there when you said decisive. It's exactly, I was thinking just the word before you said it. It was decisive. Everything that happened, they react, and they react instantly, and it hits hard. You don't ever sit there thinking, ooh, lost opportunity. You think, wow, they've grabbed that with both hands and smashed it. That's right. So once the, uh, once the crowd clears for a bit, I'm going to uh, get a bit of a chat with Bridgeburner. And uh, he'd be pretty happy. He's looking a bit flushed there. But he's happy. So I'm going to have to shout into the mic for me because uh, right, nice and loud. But how do you feel about that one? Another 3-0. Was this an expected result for you guys? Or were you, are you guys really feeling like you just turned up today? Uh, no, we just, um, cherry pickers deserve uh, you know, respect. We treated them... Uh, you know, as a team that, that could uh, take us out, so we weren't going in overconfident. For sure. So I'll just keep holding mic just close to your face. Sure. Everyone. Uh, everyone wants to hear you, uh, definitely. So let's talk about this. The, uh, the second game, Prokhorovka, right. right? The second time through, Batman dropped really early in that 39. Right. Uh, that's, that, 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 that's that was the YOLO. not. That's, was, that's the YOLO. Okay, so that wasn't the plan, was it? That, <laughs> no, it wasn't the plan for him okay. today. But you guys, straight away, you responded to that with a very decisive move over the train line where you pinced it. The, those two sixty nines there, I think it was. Uh, you know, what was the thought process there when you saw Batman hit the deck? What was what was Plan B? What was the next step for you guys? Well, those fifty one hundreds were either clipping or on three or four shots after dumping their magazines into Batman. So that allowed our T sixty nine and IS three to cross with relative safety, not having to worry about Overwatch or covering fire. 
Well, fantastic. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. A very pumped up bridge banner from a fantastic performance by the Sea Cucumbers. Triumphing over the Cherry Pickers. What a fantastic game. We're going to be back very, very soon, guys, with some more action over here. So don't go too far. We've got a lucky draw coming up tonight as well. We definitely... We definitely want to give you guys out some prizes. So if you guys have managed to get in uh, and have a go at the game and sign out one of those forms, you'll have a chance to win some awesome gear. So hang around, and we'll be giving you a bit more about that later.